is an example for a left tail test for population mean mu. Um, so the example is that the average time spent by a sophomore at campus dining during lunch is claimed to be less than 18 minutes. To verify the claim, you obtain a sample of 18 sophomores. And using the sample, you find the average as 17.5 minutes and the standard duration of the sample is 1.24 minutes. We'd like to verify the claim using alpha equals 0.01. So first, we have to identify what we are testing for. We are testing for mu. It's mu because it is the average time spent by a sophomore at campus dining during lunch. And the claim is that mu is less than 18 minutes. I observe the claim. I don't see a less than or equal to. So that statement must be in the alternative. Since mu is less than 18, the null is the exact opposite of that statement. So mu greater than or equal to 18. Clearly, you see the null has the equal sign. By definition, um, the null must have the equal sign. And that completes step one of our test. Step two. Step two. Excuse me. We have alpha. Alpha is 0.01. If alpha is 0.01, that would imply 99% confidence in our conclusion. So that is step two. Step three, we have to find the test statistic. The test statistic is given by the formula x bar minus mu naught divided by s over square root of n. Mu naught is the claimed value and the claimed value is 18 minutes, so mu naught is 18. The sample information, we have x bar. x bar is 17.5. Standard deviation of the sample is 1.24. And the sample size is 18. So now, the test statistic can be calculated as 17.5 minus 18 divided by 1.24 over square root of 18. So we can make use of a calculator to find this um, test statistic. So 17.5 minus 18 divided by 1.24 divided by square root of the sample size, which is also 18. Close paren, press enter, we get negative 1.7107. So that is our test statistic. Since this is a test for mean, the test statistic has a t distribution with parameter df. Parameter is the degrees of freedom given by n minus 1. Any time you perform a test for population mean when the standard deviation is unknown, um, which is what this example is, um, the test statistic will have a t-distribution with parameter df is equal to n minus 1. So 18 minus 1 would give you 17. That would conclude step 4. Step 5 is our concluding step, or is the conclusion. Two 
two ways to attain a conclusion. You could either use the critical value method or you could use the p-value method. Let's start with the critical value method. Since this is a left tail test, the rejection region, we draw a better sketch here. The rejection region must be on the left hand side. So the rejection region is on the left. The area of the rejection region must equal alpha. In our problem, it's 0 0.01. So this critical value right over there is a quantile, and the area below it is alpha, and it's from a t distribution, and the degrees of freedom is n minus 1. So in our case, we have t.05, comma, df. df is 18 minus 1, which is 17. We could find this critical value using inverse t, area below, which is 0 0.05, comma, 17. And we will get negative 1.739 so that is my test statistic excuse me that is my critical value now if you go back to step 3 we have our test statistic as negative 1.7107 so Negative 1.7107 is very close to the critical value. So that is the test statistic, and the critical value is negative 1.739. So although they are very close, the test statistic still does not fall in the rejection region. So our conclusion is that with 99% confidence, we fail to reject the null. If you repeat, um, or not repeat, if you actually used the p-value method to find a conclusion, using the p-value method we find a p-value first. So since this is a left tail test, the p-value is the area below the test statistic. The distribution of the test statistic is once again a bell curve, excuse me, a t distribution, which looks like a bell curve, by the way. Um, the test statistic is negative one point 7107, this is from step 3, and I'd have to find the area below it. So if I find that area, that area will be the p-value. How do I find this area? Area under the curve, corresponds to probability, and you can find it using a CDF function, and since the test statistic has a t-distribution, we use a t-CDF. So the lower endpoint here is negative infinity, so it's negative E99. The upper endpoint is the test statistic, and the parameter is the degrees of freedom, which is n minus 1, so you have 17. So if you type that in the calculator,
You'll get negative, excuse me, you'll get 0 0.05266, which is 0 0.0527. Now, we ask the usual question, is p-value less than or equal to alpha? If you say yes, you reject null. If you say no, you fail to reject null. So, what would we say? Clearly, the p-value is 0.05 to 7, but alpha in this problem is 0 0.01. So the p-value is actually not less than alpha. So you would end up saying um, fail to reject null. The evidence toward the null and the evidence toward the alternative can be found using the p-value itself. The evidence for the alternative is 1 minus p-value, so 1 minus 0 0.0527 is 0 0.9473. The evidence toward the null is p-value, which is 0 0.0527. Now, a look at this conclusion, and it kind of strikes me as odd, because if I repeat this test over and over again, 95% of the time I'm going to agree with the alternative. 5% of the time I'm going to agree with the null. So, which would imply that the alternative is more likely to be true. But we concluded that the null is likely to be true. We concluded that we failed to reject the null. Why did we do that? We did that because of the level that we set. So this is clearly a borderline case, which was quite obvious from the previous method, which is the critical value method. You can see that the test statistic was very, very close to the critical value. So this is a borderline case. And if I change the value of alpha from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1, then my conclusion will change in this problem. So. If alpha is changed to 0.1, clearly 0.0527 is less than 0.1. So with 90% confidence, you will reject the null. So this is a very interesting problem because with 99% confidence, you said we failed to reject null. But if I change the alpha with 90% confidence, you will reject the null. So you're sort of getting you're sort of getting two different conclusions, and this is because this is a very borderline case. Um, so this is where the formal interpretation of p-value should come into play. Um, so, in a borderline case like this, you observe the p-value, and p-value is the amount of error that you would be making. So, p-value is the error made when, so, it's actually the probability of error made when null is rejected. So in this case, what is that probability? It's 0 0.0527. So there is only a 5.27% chance that you'll be making a mistake when you reject the null. So if you're happy with that 5.27% error, you can go ahead and reject the null. So um, p-value tends to offer a better interpretation compared to the critical value method, and which is why most statisticians would prefer a p-value approach rather than the critical value approach. So this is a borderline case. So if I go by the p-value approach, and if I'm content with that 5.27% error, I would reject the null. 
But if you say 5.27% error is a bit too much, then you will not reject the null. So this is a borderline case. Um, could you do the test using a calculator? Um, you can, and the process is quite similar to the other two tests that we did in the previous videos. Um, have to go over to tests, select a t-test. We don't have the data. All we have in this problem is our statistics. So select statistics. The claims value here is 17 point, excuse me, the claims value is 18. The mean given in the problem was 17.5. The standard deviation was 1.24, the sample size was 18, and since this is a left tail test, I'd have to select the second one and press calculate. And that's my information. Now, as you can see, that the test statistic is negative 1.7107, that's exactly what we had. The p-value is a borderline case again, it's 0.05265, and the mean and the standard deviation are directly from the problem. Um, you can draw the p-value, um, press 2, and instead of calculating, um, if you select draw, you'll see that the p-value is the area below the test statistic, which is quite small. So as I mentioned previously, this is a borderline case. If you're okay with this 5.27% error, then um, you can reject the null. But if you think 5.27% error is a bit too much, then you will not be rejecting the null. So this is clearly a borderline case. But since in the problem, since alpha is 0.1 in the problem, our final conclusion, although this is a borderline case, our final conclusion is we fail to reject the null. So the null was mu greater than or equal to um, 18. The alternative was mu less than 18. The claim was represented by the alternative, but our test at the level of 0.01, with the level of alpha, I mean, level of significance given by alpha is 0.01. So at that particular level, we fail to reject the null. So the claim is false. at the given level. If I change the level, the claim is likely to be true, but with 99% confidence, which is a better confidence anyways, um, we conclude that the claim is false. And that is how you perform a right tail test for population mean um, using the manual approach and the calculator. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks for watching.